Okay, there's a couple of things that maybe I've confused you with by putting this in. I put this in here because I know there are people that are doing further maths in here and I know that there are people who are going to be going to university and thinking about what's, what's the priority for these things. Um, the main thing you need to consider is logarithms and algebraic functions, okay? You only need to think about the fact that if there is an ln in there, it takes priority for you. If there is not an ln, ln in there, you should use the x, the x squared, the x cubed. You should use that term instead. I've put these things in here because the inverse trig functions, inverse trig functions are not sec x. They are instead things like arc cos x. That's what I mean by an inverse trig function, like cos minus 1 or ta inverse tan. I don't mean 1 over tan. Um, I just thought it was worth pointing out. And on your memory page that I have got for you guys that I had made, you've got, uh, here it is, integration by parts. And the only thing that you need to memorize is lnx takes priority for you. That's the thing that you need to take from this. As soon as there's an ln, lnx in there, make that thing you, and the rest should all work out. Yeah, Mr. Kim. So we won't get a question that says to differentiate like sin x times lnx? Um, no. No, you wouldn't get sin x lnx. If it's e, e is an exponential function. So if we go to this bit again, exponential function is actually the last one that you'd ever pick for you. It's not very good to pick for you, OK? We're going to do something now that I think you're going to really enjoy. So we're going to do x squared e to the x with respect to x. This one's going to be a little bit longer, so I need to make sure that you, you um, plan out your writing down of this example. Don't take up lots of space, because it's going to be a little bit longer, and I want you to take your time when you write this out. So we're going to try and integrate x squared e to the x dx. We're going to try and integrate x squared e to the x dx. What am I going to take for my value of u? Good. And that must mean that my value of v dash is e to the x. So my value of v is e to the x, because you integrate. And my value of u dash is 2x. OK, so looking at this pattern of things that we've got here, we know the first thing that should be coming up is the uv. So we get that bit there. And that bit there is x squared e to the x. Then I'm going to subtract the integral of what? Good, this bit, because we've already used that bit, so we're now going to use the other bit that we haven't used yet. When I say we've used that bit, I mean that bit's in the question. So we're trying to think of that. It's a visual way of remembering the formula. That's how I remember it, and I think it's, it's worked well for me. So we're going to now try and integrate 2x e to the x it's dx. Another it's another product of two things here that we've got. So we're now going to have to apply integration by parts a second time mm -hmm. for this particular thing that we've got here. Now, there's many different options about how you want to do this. And I'm not quite sure on what I think is going to be the best way for you to lay out your page. OK, first option that you could possibly do is you could, if you wanted to, take the two to the front to make things a bit more tidy. That's one of the options you could do. Um, an alternative thing that you can do is continue working within this question so that it's all in one place. The third thing, which I think is perhaps going to be the best way of keeping our page organized, is to work this thing out somewhere separate, and then we can go and substitute it in to try and make things a little bit tidier. So I'm going to just write down, we're going to say, this thing here, this requires, and I'm going to write integration by parts. IBP. This requires integration by parts again. And I'm going to work it out separately. You are absolutely fine. If you wanted to, you could work it out in here. However, there's a minus at the beginning. So you wouldn't have UV when you do the integration by parts on that bit. You would have minus UV. And you wouldn't have minus v du dx dx, you would have plus the integral of v du dx dx. So that's why I probably like working this thing out separately, just because it helps you to deal with making any of those silly mistakes with negatives. The mistakes that you will make with this topic will probably be to do with negatives, because it's quite hard to keep a track of them. So I'm going to work out this thing separately without the negative. I'm now actually just going to work out what 2x e to the x is 
with respect to x. And now I'm doing this whole thing in blue. I'm going to do the second integration by parts. I'm going to do that bit in blue as well. So what should I take for my value of u? Good. And my value of u dash is 2. My value of v dash is e to the x. So my value of v is e to the x. Now, when I work this part out, remember, I'm only working out this bit in here. I haven't finished the question once I've done this. I'm going to say it's these two things multiplied. So that's 2x e to the x minus the integral of these two things multiplied. Because we've already, that's the thing that our question is. We've just put u and v in there. So the other thing that we have is the integral of 2e to the x with respect to x. And now I'm going to finish working out what this thing is. So I get 2x e to the x minus, what's the integral of 2e to the x? 2e to the x. And I'm not even going to bother putting the plus c in at the moment because I know I can just put that in right at the end. Okay? Don't worry about, oh my god, I haven't put plus c in, I'm, I'm going to lose a mark. You can just put it in at the end. It's absolutely fine. Okay? So this now means that our final answer is the integral of x squared e to the x with respect to x is equal to this thing, which is x squared e to the x, minus this thing, which is minus, and I'm going to bracket it because it's this thing that I've got here, minus 2x e to the x minus 2e to the x. Pretty confusing, right? Because we've got so many x's, e to the x's, and it's really, really important that you organize a page, your page, sorry, in a way that makes the most sense to you keeping track of everything. I would not recommend you doing this thing directly in here. I do that sometimes and I make mistakes. No disrespect. You'll do it maybe at the beginning and you'll make more mistakes because you're not as used to doing integration by parts. So be kind to yourself and take it easy. It's much better to take it easy and make sure you get all the marks and maybe waste 30 seconds than it is to rush it and then get it wrong. So let's just finish this last part off that we've got. We can now say that it is equal to x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus 2 e to the x plus c. And that is the integral of x squared e to the x. Yes, Mr. Kim? We could take out a factor of e to the x. So if we wanted to take out a factor of e to the x, that's quite a nice thing to do. And then we get a quadratic. We get x squared minus 2x plus 2 plus c. 1 plus or minus i. <laughs> and we'll just leave it in that form that we've got there. We don't have to factorize it, but I like that Muzakir said that because you always know that if this was part A of the question, part B of the question might be something that is to do with manipulating that, and we recognize that it's got some factor of a quadratic in here as well. So I'll give you a few... Uh, was that a question, Ibrahim? No, just a headage. Okay. I'll give you a few minutes to write this bit down. There is integration by parts twice in this question. I haven't seen it before, but I don't see why they wouldn't ask you an integration by parts three times. Yeah. What would be different about the question that would be three times? How, what would be different about the original the question? Would be Pardon? It would be an area as well. They would do it for finding an area, but that wouldn't have a third integration by parts. Look at the question. What would need to be different about the question, Hamza? <coughs> yeah, it would be an x cubed. Because think about what happens each time when we pick x. Here we had x squared, and it became a 2x. And that 2x then came up again in the integration. So then that 2x became a 2. But actually, there's no longer an x in there, so we can just do regular integration. If it was x cubed, the x cubed part would become an x squared. Then it would become an x. Then it would become the constant. And the constant doesn't need integration by parts. So this, I like the fact that we've done this question with integration by parts twice, because it shows you what integration by parts actually does. It's always trying to simplify the extra thing that you're integrating. The extra thing that we're integrating here, we didn't like. We then got something nice that we were trying to integrate here that didn't require integration by parts. Integration by parts is there to kind of reduce the complexity of the thing that you're integrating. So if you're still writing that down, that's OK. The thing I want you to do now, just on your piece of paper, I want you to integrate x squared sine x dx. OK, I want you to integrate x squared sine x dx. And you're going to pick 
x squared as your u-term, OK? I will leave it on this page so that you can finish copying that up if you haven't done. Whoops.